Hello, today we're going to look at what is undoubtedly the secret weapon of post-processing landscape photography images. I'm going to show you two tools in Adobe Lightroom that can be used to add drama, add mood, add interest to your pictures that can turn a good image into a great one. Let's go. Before we get into that though, if you like this video and you like my other content, please do consider picking up my new masterclass. It's seven hours of brand new video content and that includes an hour and 20 minute session on composition where I show you how to bring everything you see in a scene down into an interesting, intriguing and well balanced image. It will inspire, entertain and educate and I really think you're going to love it. All you need to do is head over to firstmanphotography.com slash masterclass or hit the link down below and you'll be able to start watching that within a few minutes. Right, in the video on Sunday I captured two images that I am particularly happy with and they were, a, they were an interesting pair of images to post process as well. And it, when I was doing it, it reminded me just how powerful these two tools were. So I thought it would be interesting to share that edit with you. So those two tools are the radial filter and the gradient filter, and they can be used to emphasize particular detail or draw the viewer's attention to exactly where you want it to be, but they do that in a slightly different way. So let's get into the computer and I'll show you exactly how to use those two tools. Right, straight into Adobe Lightroom and these are the images that we're going to look at. We've got this one of Malian Spout Waterfall here and we're going to make this image from this original RAW file here and then we're going to make this image from this original RAW file. So we'll start with the waterfall because uh, I think there's, there's a lot there that is really going to be of interest. So Let's bring up the original RAW file, hit the D for to go into the develop module. So the first thing we need to do with this image is to crop it because when I was actually capturing the image, I didn't realize that it was a double rainbow. You can see this sort of second rainbow there is quite faint. I just didn't notice that while I was capturing the image. So I composed the image just for that main, main rainbow there. Uh, but because that second one is there, I need to change the composition slightly. So I'm going to do that with a crop. So just hit R to bring it up the crop tool. I am on the golden ratio here and I'm going to keep that on and keep the aspect ratio the same just by hitting the lock key there and then just bring it in like this just to have more emphasis with the crop on these on these two rainbows. So I'm just going to drag that up uh, and then I've removed some of this area down here that doesn't particularly look as good. I want to just keep this area in here where you can see the rebounding uh, water off that rock and let's just come out a tiny touch more out to about there and I think hit return that looks good so happy with that crop now uh, we can get on with the edits and I think the place to start here is just to go straight in for that radial filter because as I was capturing this image it was the isolation of that rainbow and of, of that water coming down through the image that really emphasized in what I was feeling. And that's contrasted against that dark background. So I really want to try and isolate the, the waterfall and those rainbows and the radial filter will let me do that. So I'm just gonna bring the radial filter up and draw in a sort of oval shape similar to that. It's probably a little bit too big. So let's just go a bit smaller that way and then bring it down a bit somewhere around there. Now the radial filter, when you first introduce it into your image, will the changes that we then make up here will adjust the area outside of the radial filter. If you click invert, it will do vice versa. But today I'm just gonna leave it as standard because I want to affect the area outside of that radial filter, essentially creating a vignette, but I want to have slightly more control over it than a vignette would allow. I'm going to uh, reduce the exposure and you'll see as I start to reduce that exposure, it starts to darken the area outside of the waterfall. And instantly that is creating the kind of feel that I want on that image. So I'll go down to about there. That's now created that superb amount of drama. It's put all the focus in on that waterfall, in on that rainbow. And just with that one tiny little edit, it's created the mood that I was feeling at the time observing this scene. Right now let's just bring the shadows up a touch because it's all gone a bit dark around the outside. 
So just bring the shadows up a touch to bring that back. I'm going to do the same with the blacks up to about 25. Yeah, I can just hold down the option key and see when black starts to come in and just leave it around there. I'm then going to do the same with the whites and just up them, use the option key again, just to see when white starts to come into the image, touch more, and there we go. Now we've got that up, you can see the whites are a bit too bright and I'm gonna just drag that back down again to about 54 and that looks just about perfect. So what else? Let's just increase the vibrance and the saturation to about there. That's starting to look really nice, but as you can see, this green here has come out a bit too much and that's now overpowering and unbalancing that image. What I do like though is because the sun is striking that waterfall, which creates the rainbow, it's creating this slight difference in the image of, of white balance. So down here, we have that kind of bluish tint to the white balance. And where the sun is then coming in, we've got that yellow and I really like that effect. Uh, and I might emphasize that a little bit. So. We're also now going to use a gradient filter to reduce this area here. I could use a radial filter, inverted, but I'm going to do it with a gradient filter. So just bring it in sideways like this and just to about there, I think. Just reduce the exposure down to somewhere around there. I'm then going to up the shadows a touch just so I'm not bringing all of that darker area down. And I'm also going to adjust the white balance on that. I'm just going to up the temperature a touch just because I really like the warm feel, but I don't want the the, the the harsh green there, which I've now reduced. And I'm going to take some green out of it, in fact, by adding in some tint just to about there. Right, that's looking pretty good now, so I can remove that gradient. That's a nice dark area there now. And I'm just going to change the white balance of the overall image as well. So I'm going to go up just a touch to bring out that as well. And that's looking really, really nice now. We're very close, in fact. Let's just bring up the radial filter once more and I'm just going to lighten that up just a touch around the outside and there we go. Right, uh, what else do we need to do? I think just to emphasize the rainbow a bit more. And this is what I will often do uh, with rainbows is just to up the, the saturation just a touch so you can see the rainbow, gives you that same sort of feel. So what I'm gonna do for that is use the brush tool and just adjust the size with my bracket keys. And I'm going to, I'll add in a bit of exposure first just cause so I can see what I'm doing, but I generally just want to up the saturation. So I'm just gonna draw over these rainbows like this. I can see what I'm doing now because it's going overexposed on those rainbows. That's okay because I'm gonna change that again in a minute. I just want to be able to see what I'm doing. Then reduce the exposure down again, just to normal and you can see the saturation has increased on those rainbows. Let's just show you that there. Adjust the saturation just with that brush tool. So I'm just gonna go up to about there and adjust that, and I think that emphasizes those colors really, really nicely. Right, so we're nearly there. Just a couple of little bits to, a little couple of spots to remove. There's one just there. I think that's about it. So I'm really happy with this image. You can see just with that radial filter how easy it was to just focus that attention on the parts of the image that really mattered and use that dark background to really emphasize what's going on in the scene. Right, let's move on to the next one. This is the final image, but we're going to develop it with from this one. This is the original RAW file. And if you saw the video, you can see that there was a fire uh, with the smoke coming behind this lone tree up on the North York Moors. And that's very faint at the moment. You can also see some of that warm evening light on the heather here and on the tree. So essentially the problem I have here is that the tree is underexposed and the sky is slightly overexposed. It's a, it's a relatively okay exposure overall, but I want to brighten up the foreground and the tree so you can see more of that light and darken the sky a bit so you can see the, the smoke a bit more and the, the color in that, in that sky. And I'm gonna do that with the gradient filter and a very specific, relatively new tool that's just fantastic, which I've talked a bit about a bit before. So I'm just gonna draw in my gradient, hold the shift down, hold shift down and then just drag it down onto here. Right, so if I was just to reduce, let's just reset that. If I was just to reduce the exposure like that, 
it darkens everything. So the sky is starting to look really good, but the tree's gone darker as well. And this would be the same if you were using a physical filter, that same thing would happen. But now in Lightroom, we can just, we can use the range mask. So all I'm gonna do is bring up range mask, go down to luminance, and then show luminance mask, and it will show the mask with red. So everything that is red will be affected by the changes we make with the sliders. But I'm going to just change the range using the luminance. So you can see by just sliding that up, it's starting to come off the tree, which is a much darker color, darker luminance in the, in the image. Uh, so just reduce that. So it's now significantly less red than the rest of the scene. So now let's just remove the luminance mask and then reduce the exposure and see what happens. And you can see that the tree is now getting much less dark than the rest of the scene. It's probably a bit too far. So I'll go a bit more that way. And I've gone too far on the exposure, but let's go up to about there. That sky is starting to now look pretty good and the tree is now well balanced. So I think that's a much more balanced exposure now overall. The next thing I wanna do is just get my profile corrections right. I normally do this first, uh, but it's not a Sigma lens, it's a Tamron. There we go. Right, let's come back up to the top and just add in some contrast. I'm going to add in about 17 of contrast, I think and then bring the highlights down overall just to really emphasize the colors in that sky. You can see here, I'm really short on the white. So I'm now going to drag the white up fairly significantly on this image to around there, I think. That'll do, let's bring up the gradient filter again and just adjust that a bit now. We've made those changes, bring that down a bit. I'm gonna up the shadows just so I'm not affecting the tree as much and bring the highlights down there as well. And I'm just gonna give the, the sky's got a bit too blue for me now, so I'm just gonna up the, the warmth in that and add in a bit of magenta, which was there in some of these clouds uh, and it's kind of been removed in the raw file. So I'm going to add that, add a touch of that uh, back in. Right, that looks nicely balanced. Now I'm starting to get some of that really nice warm light on there and I just want to increase the vibrance and the saturation a touch to around there. And let's also ha just have a look at the hue of the HSL panel here because some of these colors aren't quite right for me. It's, it felt slightly warmer than that when I was shooting it. So let's just bring in the hue there onto this yellow on the tree and just warm that up slightly. I've gone too far there, but just nice subtle changes just to take a bit of the yellow out and make that a touch more red and that's affected the foreground as well. I now think that looks really, really good and pretty close to what we were doing. Let's just reduce the saturation a little bit. And there we go, increase the shadows a touch more. See, this is where your, your image can end up looking a bit too HDR-like. I've gone too far on the shadows there. But the foreground is much brighter than the sky now. I don't like that, so I'm just gonna undo that and just have subtle increases in those shadows. That's now looking pretty good. I just want to show you one more thing that is really good for lone tree shots like this or woodland photography. And that is to sort of emphasize the tree in the scene, which is the main subject of the scene. And I'm gonna do that with clarity. So I'm going to reduce the clarity overall on the image to about 60. What that does is reduce the clarity of the foreground. And I don't mind that because some of it is a bit out of focus anyway with the aperture that I used on purpose. And I don't mind that because I like that out of focus area in the foreground leading you up to that beautiful subject in the, in the mid-ground there. That's, that was really what I was going for. And just by reducing the clarity overall, that emphasizes that feel. Having reduced the clarity overall, it's done the same to the tree as well. So I now need to paint that clarity back in with the tree. So just reset that and then up the clarity on the brush to 60, maybe a touch more, let's go to 70. And then just paint that clarity back in over the tree like this. So I'm just gonna use a fairly big brush to do the leaves and the branches up here and like that. I've got the flow down to 80 on this, so I just wanna go over it a few times, then reduce my brush size using the bracket keys to do the trunk of the tree, and then just paint again that clarity back in over that tree, and that just brings out the detail of that tree really nicely, makes it stand out from the background. I've added a little bit of smoothness to the, to the foreground, to the sky, which I think works really, really well. I'm really happy with that image. It's worked out 
really nicely. So I'm really happy with these two images that I've just edited using that radial filter, using that gradient filter, and they're so powerful, so powerful. But I think it's time to print the images now. I'm gonna print that waterfall image because I'm particularly happy with that one. So let's get that into the printer. We'll see how it looks. I'm just absolutely thrilled with this image. I'm pretty sure it's one of the best images I've taken this year so far, and that came on a day that I really wasn't expecting anything. So yeah, very happy with that. So yeah, there's much more on post-processing and the entire print process on my new masterclass. Just go to firstmanphotography.com slash masterclass and please do check it out. Anyway, I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out. Pew.